Hello guys, we shall continue with the third video for the rate of reactions where we are going to learn how to determine the order of reaction via experimental methods. Now let's consider the chemical reactions between oxygen and nitrogen monoxide, a key step in the formation of acid rain in the industrial production of nitric acid. So O2 plus 2NO give 2NO2. So the rate equation is expressed in the general form as rate is equals to K O2 power of X and O power of Y. So note that the order of reaction cannot be determined directly from the stoichiometry, that means it may not be 1 or 2. So to find out the order of reactions of O and NO, we run a series of experiments, starting each one with a different set of reactor and concentration, and obtaining an initial rate for each case. So given to you in the tables in here is the, uh, the experiment and uh, 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 when the concentration authorizations and also the initial rate. So from each of the experiment, rate equations are expressed and substituted accordingly. When experiment 1, uh, we have 2.42 times 10 power of negative 3 equals to k, 1.10 times 10 power of negative 2 times 2.5 times 10 power of negative 2 power of y. Experiment 2 is substituted, so it's experiment 3 and experiment 4. Now in order to get the order of reactions for x and y, we need to compare experiment to experiment. So to get order of reaction with respect to O2, we compare experiment 1 and experiment 2. And in order to get the order of reactions for NO, we compare experiment 1 and experiment 3. So below are how we are going to compare. So for exper when experiment 2 and 1 are compared, so you just divide in between these two, okay? So you can cancel, K and K can be cancelled, this one and this one can be cancelled. So eventually you will find out that uh, 2.20 is equal to 2. So X will be equal to 1. In other words, it is first order with respect to O2. When you compare between experiment 3 and 1, so you have 9.6 and 10 more negative 3 over this one. So between 1.10 and 1.10 can be cancelled. K and K can also be cancelled. So you have 5.04 is equal to 2 power of Y. Therefore, Y is equal to 2. So with this, we say that the order of uh, the rate equation can be then re expressed as rate is equal to K O2 times N O square. So the overall order of reaction is the third order of reactions. So using an experiment, the rate constant can be then calculated. For example, if you use experiment 1, so substitute basically all the all the figure inside there, you have 2.40 times 10 power negative 3 equals to k times 1.10 times 10 power negative 2 multiplied by 2.50 times 10 power negative 2 squared. So press the calculator, you get a rate constant as 349 mole minus 2 dm6 s minus 1. So once the order of reaction and the rate constant were determined, we can predict the rate of reaction under any concentration. So for example, in experiment 4, we have rate is equal to 3.49, 349, and 3.30 times negative 2, 7.50 times negative 2. So at the end of the day, you get rate is equal to 6.48 times 10 power negative 2 mole per decimeter cube per second. So generally, this is how we determine the order of reactions. A higher levels one is by using the graphical methods. So using the combinations between the graphical method and initial method, the order of reaction can be found. For example, to study the hydrolysis of bromoethane with potassium hydroxide, the form alcohol and also potassium bromide, the following results were obtained from two experiments on such hydrolysis. In each experiment, the overall KOH remained virtually constant at the value given on the top of column. So this is the concentration of this is uh, concentration two experiment carry out at two different concentration of potassium hydroxide. Well, this is the graph of the changes of CH3 CH2 Br when you use KOH at 0 0.1 and KOH 0 0.15. So eventually we can plot both of the graph in the same graph paper. Okay, so this is the graph paper given off by the this uh, by the. Uh, 0 point, this is the graph given by 0 0.15 and this is the graph given by 0 0.10. So eventually we can use the gra any graph to determine the half-life of the reaction. So if we start from 0 0.01, first half-life is 0 0.05, you get 80. Then you get 0 0.025 is uh, 160. And then the third half-life will be 240. 
So from here, since the first t-half is equal to the second t-half is equal to the third t-half, so the order of reaction with respect to CH3CH2Br is first order of reactions. In order to determine the, the order of reaction with respect to KOH, we find the initial rate from the graph. So the initial rate of the graph is fine for both uh, zero, uh, 0 0.15 and also 0 0.10. So we can calculate the tangent of the graph where we get rate is equals to uh, 6.25 times 10 to the negative 5 for 0 0.10 and then 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4 is for 0 0.15. So based on the rate equation where we have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4 equals to k 0 0.01 times 0 0.15 power of y 6.25 times 10 power of negative 5 is equal to k 0 0.01 times 0 0.10 power of y so 1.6 is equal to 1.5 power of y so you have to use the log method so log 1.6 is equal to y log 1.5 so you get 0 0.24 over 0 0.176 you get approximately equals to 1 therefore we can conclude that it is first order with respect to potassium hydroxide so based on this one, the overall order of reaction, the overall order of reaction is, uh, the overall rate equation is written as rate is equal to k CH3 CH2 Br times KOH, and the order of reaction is second order. In order to calculate the rate constant, you use any two experiments to calculate. For example, experiment two, get 1.0 times 1 over negative four. K so k is equal to 0 0.0667 small bond minus 1 dm cube s minus 1. So there I have for you uh, the two uh, uh, easier methods and the more difficult methods how to determine the order of reactions. Okay, so until then we'll see you in our last video. Thank you.